In Creo Schematics, you can create your own wire artifacts. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I am in a design. This is one that I created based off of the demo database that comes in the installation of Creo Schematics. If I go to the Catalog Explorer, right now I am in Blocks. If I go to the drop down list, I can change to fibers. Here are some of the different fibers that come in here. I'll select the different ones, and here's a standard routing wire. Here's a spare cord, doesn't have a shape in here. But if I want to create my own wire, I can use this button to do it. I'll click on create new fiber. Here it is in here. Let's right click on here and then go to properties. Here we have a name in here. But first, before I change the name, I am going to select a data table. I happen to know that if I change the name and add a data table, it's going to wipe out the name that's listed in here. So I might as well do that at the end. I'm going to select a data table. Here I am in the data table explorer. Here is a data table that I created in another video. And this one has 900 different wires set up for different wire gauges, different types, different colors. And so this is a great reference that I can use for routing wires, especially in Creo Parametric, because this data table already has the five required properties for logical referencing. First, you have to have a spool name. You also have to have a minimum bend radius thickness, object type, and units. So this is good, let's click the OK button. Now that I have selected the data table, I'm going to apply a data set so that it populates the list of parameters in here. And usually you just pick the first one in the list. You can pick any one that you want, but this one is good. I'll click the OK button. Now you see all the different parameters that are listed in here. The type here is set to connection. In the individual shape, I'll change that to be a wiring wire, but be aware that you could do that from here. Sometimes people don't change the type for the actual object itself in case they wanna make different shapes for a block diagram and a circuit diagram and a wiring diagram. So let's cancel out of there. Let's change the name. I'm gonna call this AS. 22759 for the wire type. This is good. You'll notice that there are three other tabs in this dialog box, but they are grayed out for the object itself. Here's this button here that you could use for has direction, but really, does that matter? Uh, a lot of times you don't want to do that because that can get you into trouble with some of the reports that you generate. All right, let's click the OK button. Oh yeah, I think for shields it causes some issues especially. So here we have the new fiber created in here. In the upper right hand corner you have a drop down list and you want to make this make sure that this is set to the correct object type before you make a shape. So for example, if I change this to block and then I go to create a new shape in here, which you can do from this icon or right click on it and choose new shape, you'll notice that since this was set to block, this is the shape for using this particular fiber in a block diagram. Let's change this to wiring. Very common mistake that people make. Uh, the default, what is, it's going to be set to whatever type of sheet that you currently have open. So just be aware of that. All right, so now I've changed to wiring. You'll notice the one that was listed in here before is no longer in there. And now when I create a new shape, it is of the type wiring. You can right click and change the sheet parameters if you want. For example, maybe I want to call this the AS22759 wire shape. You can change the description. Maybe this is going to be for standard wiring. And you can change any other information that you want in here. You can also add additional parameters, but usually for the sheet, you don't care about stuff like that. Let's click, oh yeah, one thing to note, here we have the diagram type. You'll notice that it is grayed out because again, it's usually, it's really driven by whatever diagram type you have set when you create the shape. Let's click the OK button over here. So now we have the shape. 
I got to that dialog box by right clicking and going to sheet parameters. There's another dialog box for the shape properties. And this is really where you're going to do some customization. All right, so here we have the type. You want to make sure that you set the type over here to wiring wire so that you're actually able to use it for routing and logical referencing. The next tab that we have over here is the shape tab. So if you wanted this to be a different color, you could do that. You can also change the line style, line width, uh, all good stuff. And I've used this before, especially when I've wanted to color code my wires. For example, I've used red for my power wires and you can use black for you know just regular wires. Sometimes I've used blue and green depending on the different signals that are going through here. Uh, let's go to the label tab and right now this one does not have a label the position is set to none if you want to have a label if you want to have information about the wire you can change the position from none to whatever you want to use both ends, start end, or put it in the middle and right now it's got no text in here you can type in text manually if you wanted to for the label but usually you want to extract information from the instance itself and one way to do that is by using the parameter button here are all the different parameters that are associated with the object and I like to put in there the name so I'll select it and hit the apply button and also the wire gauge let's hit the apply button and then the color I can select before I click OK some people like to put spool name in there as well uh, just because it's a cryptic name in my data table, I'm not going to use that, but you can use any of the different parameters in here. Let's click the OK button. Now let's do some editing in here. I like to have a space and then a dash and a space before the wire gauge. Then after the actual wire gauge, I like to have AWG in capital letters. And then let's just have a space before the color. There is a function button, and you can use this to extract higher level information. So for example, you can extract information from the component it's routed from and the component that it's routed to, but I find this to be a little bit of overkill, so I'm gonna cancel out of there. Let's see another thing in here. This height is kind of big for my diagram. I think this diagram uses a grid size of 1.25, so I want it to be a little smaller than that. I'm gonna use a value of one. Uh, everything else in here looks good. There's a branch tab in here if you wanted to set information like branch shape or network shape, but that's really not necessary for what I'm doing. I will click the OK button. And so now I have my shape configured in here. If I change the diagram type to all types, there you'll see that other shape that I created in here in case I wanted to use this on block diagrams. If I no longer wanted that, I can use the delete button in order to get rid of that additional shape that was created. Let me go back to this object over here. I'm going to right click and go to properties. I want to show you that you can also use this add button if you wanted to add in other additional properties that are, or excuse me, parameters that are available in your particular diagram. So for example, maybe you wanted to specify vendor, you could do that. But let's cancel out of there. I've got everything set up for my wire. Let's click the OK button. And now that I've got it in here, I can use it for routing. And you can do that right from this button inside of the Catalog Explorer. Also, I can do it from the Route button. If you go to the drop down, you can route fibers, you can route cables, or here's the default for fiber. Let me select my particular wire. Let's click the OK button. And I can start off by routing a wire from there over to there. And there you can see that it has the property set up for it. Let me right click and exit out of the routing tool. And then I can select it, go to the properties, and apply a different data set. Maybe I want to use, let's see, let's use 20 gauge wire. I'll go to the drop down list, and these are all the different values that are available from the data tables in there. And maybe I want to use the red wire. Maybe I want to use this particular data set, which is data set number 193 in there. That's good. I can click the OK button and OK. 
and you'll notice that the label has updated with 20 AWG and red. So that's how you can set up your own artifacts for wires and then route them and then change the properties. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.